Welcome to Alaska Weather, a production of Alaska Public Media and the National Weather Service, Alaska Region. Produced and broadcast daily from the studios of KAKM, Alaska Weather provides complete forecasts, public, marine, and aviation for all of Alaska. Alaska Weather is made possible by the following sponsors. Support comes from the University of Alaska College Savings Plan, helping you and your child save for college every step of the way, from diapers to diploma. More information at uacollegesavings.com. The National Weather Service. Hello everyone and thanks so much for joining us this evening for Thursday's edition of Alaska Weather. I'm Dave Percy. On uh, satellite imagery yesterday, uh, system here moving through the southeast coast, a lot of showers following in behind. A uh, weak system back here toward Kodiak and uh, considerable clouds up here over the southeast interior on up across the east central interior and kind of extending back there toward the west, clearing Bristol Bay, drier conditions there from the eastern Aleutians and Alaska Peninsula and a few more clouds and a little bit of precipitation out over the central Aleutians with most of the cold air back up there to the north. And uh, if we roll that for today, you can see that system very weak here, just bringing some high clouds right through here to start with today. And that's spreading eastward. High clouds where there were some areas of snow and lower clouds there along the uh, coast here and mostly uh, away from Bethel, more likely though, a little more widespread up over the Yukon Delta. And that extended up to the southern Seward Peninsula and of course back towards St. Lawrence Island. And then on that last frame, you can see the next system pushing into the far western Aleutians. On the chart here, uh, trough mostly off the southeast coast, they're associated with this low farther back to the west southwest. A uh, few showers scattered to isolated, uh, mostly Sitka, Port Alexander, on up to Juneau and Haines, and a uh, little bit of a mixed rain and snow shower pattern earlier today around Yakutat, uh, and that's about it. Most of the showers remaining near or off the coast there. A little more sunshine here down over the southern areas with the cool temperatures, mid-30s down that way this afternoon. Uh, clearing out here, Prince William Sound, and of course, South Central Alaska after the patchy fog around uh, Cook Inlet. But uh, northerly winds on the increase, uh, the gradient with a high over the interior back down toward Bristol Bay. Low pressure in the Gulf, uh, northerly winds uh, gusting 30 to as high as 45 miles per hour at Seward. And uh, also over at Whittier, a little bit less there toward Valdez. And then from the northeastern Copper River Basin, clouds, areas of light snow, Nabesna, and from the Wrangles on up uh, toward the Northway area toward Eagle. Uh, earlier today, a little bit of light snow in the Fairbanks area. That's mostly now to the north of the area from the Yukon Flats. Back to the west across Koyukuk Valley, light snow report at Bettles today. And that extends all the way out across uh, the Kobuk Valley to the northwest interior there. Uh, Kivalina, snow, and then the winds increase with this low center there northwest of Point Lay. Uh, winds from the southwest, 22 gusting size, 45 miles per hour at Cave Lisbon, on up toward Point Lay. Snow and blowing snow going on there with visibilities at times down to a half a mile, uh, let, letting up there toward Barrow and not quite as bad. Just some clouds there on the eastern Arctic coast, maybe some patchy fog, but definitely a lot better conditions there than they were back to the west. And a uh, little bit of a break there in between the systems, but some flurries in and around the Bering Strait. And then back to the west, uh, high pressure right th through this area. So uh, nice conditions there for the eastern Aleutians, Alaska Peninsula today. And then this mostly clouds, could be a few flurries in here, but the main snow producing stuff up to the northwest there. Some light stuff did get into Sparavon, a few flurries at McGrath as well. And then the drier northwest winds there across Kodiak Island, mostly sunny skies there. And then huge cloud shield here with that uh, system down to the south, spreading rain and snow here into the central western Aleutian areas there with uh, thick cirrus spreading into the southwestern Bering Sea. And for tonight, that pattern will continue. The main system sliding eastward a little bit there. 
Uh, good southeast winds, so occasional rain there for the central Aleutians, Atka, and Adak, with moisture initially spreading back up to the west there. Could see uh, rain and snow moving into the uh, Pribilof Island areas, but uh, generally dry here over the southeast Bering Sea. Maybe a few breaks continuing, but dry for the Alaska Peninsula as uh, winds start to become a little more southeasterly. High pressure in over Bristol Bay, but still a lot of moisture here to the north there from the Kilbark Mountains. Moisture sliding eastward there in the flow associated with this trough. Uh, right across Norton Sound. So periods of light snow, fog, Norton Sound, mainly the southern Seward Peninsula on into the interior, probably into the Cuscombe Valley and then continuing northward there across the Kobuk Valley and uh, same pattern continuing for the western Arctic coast that you saw today in the Noatak Valley. Chance of snow, Kivalina, even Kotzebue and uh, possibly uh, Buckland there. Eastern Arctic coast though, southwest flow should keep it mostly dry but it won't clear out completely there, but it should be mostly snow free. And again, still periods of snow back to the west, snow and blowing snow occasionally there on the west side. And then uh, this uh, trough keeps a chance of showers going mostly right along the coast. Heaviest precipitation should remain off the coast. So inland areas, it's mostly cloudy and mainly dry. Chance of a uh, few snow showers here uh, from the Yakutat to Cape Yakutaga area and then uh, still mostly cloudy, some flurries, uh, Wrangell Mountains on up in toward the Northway area. Otherwise high pressure, light winds, mostly cloudy skies. Could be some areas that uh, clear out, but generally it won't go stark raving clear up in this area in the Tanah Valley. We'll look for some clearing, more clearing though south of the mountains, south of the Alaska Range with uh, clear skies, patchy fog, especially around Cook Inlet and Kinnick, Turnigan Arm areas. Northwest winds, not too bad, uh, actually tending to diminish here for Kodiak Island there with a high pressure just back to the west and then all the shower activity south of Prince William Sound or southeast of uh, Seward there. And uh, winds on the increase uh, for the eastern Aleutians we'll see for tomorrow. That system low center comes up southwest of Nikolsky there, 975 millibars. Good gale force winds, southeasterlies, warmer conditions, rain, Alaska Peninsula to the Fox Islands. Right up to the Pribilofs, uh, winds on the increase there as well with warmer conditions coming in. Chance of moisture uh, reaching Nunavak Island. Then a little bit of a break and some leftover moisture up here from St. Lawrence Island across Norton Sound. So look for some areas of light snow, clouds, patchy fog there for the Seward Peninsula. Inland here, uh, right in toward the Tanana area, possibly as far east as Fairbanks and then northward there across the Yukon Flats, Koyukuk Valley, all the way back out again towards uh, Red Dog and Kivalina. And for the Arctic coast, that low center pulling eastward there. So you look for surges of light snow and fog with uh, brisk winds out of the west, uh, 15 to 25, possible gusts of 30 miles per hour here for the Arctic coast. Uh, less of an extent of that uh, pattern there for the east side. Otherwise, sunshine here, less winds now for the uh, Kenai Peninsula, especially Resurrection Bay and uh, Prince William Sound. Actually, winds will be pretty light in these areas tomorrow, even the North Gulf Coast. Light winds, Kodiak Island and the Barrens. And uh, showers are that low off the coast, but uh, Wrangell Mountain's still enough moisture left over for some mostly cloudy skies and areas of light snow here right under the high centers, about 1,026 millibars there over the Yukon and uh, north of the Susitna Valley. And fair skies, mostly sunny here over the southeast coast tomorrow. Again, just our risk of some showers now down off the central and south coast. Otherwise, a pretty good day coming up uh, for tomorrow, tomorrow afternoon. And then for Saturday, even uh, more sunshine in store for the area there, but winds on the light side, especially along the coast, uh, pretty light winds, locally channeled winds, uh, maybe up to 25 knots, uh, possibly Stevens Passage, more likely the Northern Lynn Canal with those northerly winds. Fair skies, Copper River Basin clearing out. Looks like uh, most of the snow threat is over. Whatever occurs here in the cloudy areas will be just flurries at best uh, with nothing significant. Mostly clear skies. Brooks Range, North Slope, uh, offshore flow there, west-southwest breezes. So any snow now will be well north of the coast, even Barrow there. But uh, clouds on the increase, winds on the increase here for the uh, Chukchi Sea areas in the south, southern area, especially as you get down toward the Bering Strait. Snow blowing snow in store for St. Lawrence Island. 
excuse me, good gale force easterlies from the southwest coast there. Chance of snow across the Yukon Delta, but probably not enough will fall to create any blowing snow or anything too serious there. Just a big increase in the winds here across the northern Bering Sea. 35 to 40, possibly 45 knots. Lighter winds for the Pribilofs as that low center approaches. And then down to the south of the center, of course, winds more westerly across the Aleutians with uh, showers, colder air becoming mixed with rain, and then just snow out towards Shimia. And then uh, good gales here in store for Kodiak Island with rain, heavy at times for the day Saturday. All that moisture spreading into Bristol Bay there, but lighter amounts as it crosses the Aleutian rain. So look for some rain and snow chances for King Salmon. And then also snow on the increase here across Iliamna and up the eastern slopes of the western Alaska range there, west of Cook Inlet. And also the southern Kenai Peninsula increasing clouds and uh, increasing chance of mixed rain or snow in the late afternoon for Saturday. Otherwise pretty fair over the interior of just some variable clouds. And I mentioned a really nice day coming up Saturday for the Panhandle. And temperatures today down that way, mid-30s to near 40, Juneau at 40 degrees. Not uh, too far off there at Sitka with 39, Kawak also 39. Up at Skagway, 38 degrees today, Yakutat 37. And there's Cordova with a 33 degree temperature, but just 19 at Valdez and Seward with those uh, gusty north winds up to 26, 25 down at Homer, right at the freeze mark for Kodiak. Two degrees above zero this afternoon in Kenai, 11 in Palmer, Talkeetna five below, and a 10 at Alcana, while McCarthy sat at five degrees above zero. Zero even north way, but minus 12 at Fairbanks, Tanana 10 below, and Fort Yukon at five. Bettles, zero, minus six there at Anatovic, and the Arctic coast, uh, things ranging from minus 14 over at Kaktovik, to uh, six above at Barrow, nine at Point Lay, with five degrees at Kivalina, Point Hope, 16 above, 19 there at Nome, while McGrath, zero, warmed up to 24 down toward Bethel, with 30 at St. Michael, 34 at Macoriuk there, and then down toward Bristol Bay, we see ranging five degrees at King Salmon to uh, 24 there at Pilot Point, 35 at Cold Bay, lower to mid 30s here for the Pribilofs with Unalaska at 37, and mid 30s for the Central Aleutians here, 30 degrees even at Shimia. And the lows for tonight, uh, 10 to 20, maybe 25 below zero in the clear areas here over the Eastern Interior. Milder toward the Arctic coast on the east side, still below zero, above zero on the west side. And uh, with the clouds here and warming temperatures, uh, lows in the teens to mid 20s along the coast, upper 20s to mid 30s for the Alaska Peninsula, mid 30s for the Aleutians, not much change for uh, the Pribilofs. And lows mostly in the 20s there for the southeast coast. Highs for tomorrow looking like this. Uh, much like today here from 0 to 15 above, South Central Alaska, Manuska's the Sitna Valley, near 31 for Kodiak, upper 20s to mid 30s for the Panhandle, and uh, Copper River Basin about 10 below there at Gulcana, below 0, 10 to 20 below for the eastern Tanana Valley and the Yukon Flats, and plus side of 0, 0 to 10 for the Arctic Coast, near 40 for the Pribilofs, near 40 Cold Bay, Nelson Lagoon Falls Pass, as well as Adak and Atkin, a little cooler towards Shimia. Flying weather tomorrow, VFR, eastern interior, south central Alaska, north Gulf Coast, maybe some marginal VFR, western Prince William Sound to start with, but IFR here, southern side of the Seward Peninsula, northeast Norton Sound, up into the Koyukov Valley, back across the Brooks Range to the western Arctic coast, and we have a break right through here, increasing IFR over the Aleutians, and then moving on to uh, tomorrow afternoon, and IFR now slides up to the Alaska Peninsula and extends back across the eastern Aleutians. Marginal VFR anywhere over the Bering Sea, central Aleutians, right up into Norton Sound, the Seward Peninsula. VFR continues south of the Alaska Range here to Kodiak Island, North Gulf Coast. Good VFR for the Panhandle. A patch of IFR there through the central interior, right up the Koyukuk Valley to the southern slopes of the Brooks Range. And lowest conditions again tomorrow, like today, will be found on the western Arctic coast. And for passes, Anatovic, marginal VFR. Adigan, same forecast, uh, marginal, possibly IFR at times, but uh, more likely marginal, while Lake Clark and Merrill, 
Looks uh, VFR, rainy though, VFR, but could be marginal on the western approach. And for windy VFR, Isabel, occasionally marginal, but Mentasta VFR. And Sunita will be open. Portage, starting out marginal possibly. And then VFR the rest of the day, Chilkoot and White VFR. Freezing levels, not much to uh, look at here. 2,000 feet down south of the Aleutians. At the surface up towards St. Matthew Island, back down to the Alaska Peninsula across Kodiak Island, hugging the North Gulf Coast and cutting southeastward across the Panhandle. So moving on to icing, we've got uh, light to very isolated moderate rime, but about 1,000 feet here with that area moisture from the uh, Eastern Brooks Range here right out to Eastern Norton Sound and maybe a patch here over the Wrangell Mountains down toward the coast. Otherwise icing free, Southern Alaska and the Panhandle. And then with that uh, system moving in, could be some moderate rime icing there above about 5,000 feet for the Alaska Peninsula with icing chances increasing here towards St. Lawrence Island and catching the southwest coast. Upper level wind flow tomorrow ridging right up through this area. So westerly winds at 120 knots cutting right across southern Alaska and then diving southeastward here west of the Panhandle around this upper level low there near the Queen Charlottes. This, tra this system tracking eastward there going to keep the snow in mainly over the western Arctic coast and to a lesser extent due to drier southwest flow on the east side. This system down to the south pushing the main Pacific jet well to the south here. But again, that uh, southerly flow will bring those stronger winds into the Alaska Peninsula eventually in the southwest coast. 9,000 feet, 35 to 65 knots here across the eastern Aleutians tomorrow. Winds increasing across the entire eastern Bering Sea and then diminishing back toward the west. While the southeast coast, pretty light winds, 5 to maybe 15 knots out of the north. And then a stretch of southwesterlies or west southwesterlies, 25 to 30 knots through the central interior. And that actually extends all the way up to the Arctic coast. Same pattern, 3,000 feet. Uh, highs rearranged a little differently here, right through here. So pretty light variable winds, North Gulf Coast, Copper River Basin, <clears throat> Northern Panhandle, northerlies, 15 knots down to the south. Strongest winds, of course, out here, Bristol Bay, the Alaska Peninsula, Southeast Bering Sea, head of that front, uh, 50 to 60 knots here at this elevation, 30 knots all the way up to St. Matthew Island and then dropping off considerably back to the west, a really weak low here north of the Aleutian, so just 15 knots, but then picking back up to 25 towards Shimia. Turbulence-wise, Mater Chop below 5,000 feet, Alaska Peninsula, moving up to St. Lawrence Island, across the Perbolofs, down to Unalaska Island, smoother out west, pretty good here over southern Alaska, central Arctic coast, occasional Mater Chop there, mostly below 4,000 feet. And after the break, Stargazer, I'll be back with the marine forecasts. Touring the Rocky Planet. Hey there, stargazers. I'm James Albury, director of the Kika Silva Plot Planetarium in Gainesville, Florida. And I'm Dean Regas, astronomer for the Cincinnati Observatory, and we're here to help you find your way around the sky. The planets Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Mars have a few things in common. They're all round, rocky objects, also called terrestrial planets, which are thousands of miles in diameter. And they all circle relatively close to the sun. Well, at least compared to the outer planets of Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. Since they're rocky, that means you can actually stand on them. You can, but some of them you wouldn't want to. <laughs> True. But early this week, you have the best chance of seeing three of the four terrestrial planets in the sky. Let's show you. Okay, we have our sky set to December 15th at about 5.45 p.m. just after sunset. Timing is key to see the planet closest to the sun. Do you see it? Over there in the southwest? Low above the horizon, you might, just might, be able to make out the planet Mercury. It never strays far from the sun and often shines with a pinkish hue. Higher up in the southwest is a much brighter planet. In fact, it is the brightest planet you can see from Earth, other than the Earth. That's Venus, and you've probably been seeing her every night after sunset for the past few months. And you'll still have a few more months to bask in Venus's dazzling glow before she heads out of the evening sky later in 2017. 
Finally, even higher in the sky and farther to the south, you can find the red planet Mars. At 545, Mars might be tough to spot, but as we move towards 6 p.m. and 615, he will pop into view as Mercury sets. From above the solar system, we can look at the inner planets, Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Mars, and see how they revolve around the sun. Mercury is the closest to the sun and moves the fastest. Venus is second, Earth is third, and Mars is fourth. The distance from the sun determines how fast a planet will move and how long it takes to make one trip around the sun. That's its year. A year on Earth is about 365 days long, while a year on Mercury is only 88 days. James would be over 200 years old on Mercury. <laughs> well, you young whippersnapper. Venus takes 225 days to circle the sun, and a year on Mars is 687 days. That means Dean would be only 22 years old on Mars. Hmm, I'll take that. Our best pictures of Mercury come from the Messenger spacecraft, which mapped almost the entire surface. What we see on Mercury is a gray, dusty world, scarred by craters, craters, and more craters. In fact, Mercury looks a lot like our moon, showing the impacts of ancient collisions with meteoroids and comets. Now, let me give you a tip. You would not want to visit the surface of Venus. No way. It is hot, like 900 degrees Fahrenheit hot. Venus's thick atmosphere traps in so much heat that the surface boils, and the atmosphere is heavy. The air pressure would actually squish you flat. And then if it rains on Venus, watch out. It doesn't rain water, it rains sulfuric acid. So you'd be a roasted, squished, acidy pile of goop on Venus. Now we're on Mars, and most of it looks like a dry orange desert. You can also find tall mountains like Olympus Mons, which is three times taller than any mountain on Earth, and deep valleys like Valles Marineris, which is 2,500 miles long and five times deeper than the Grand Canyon. Plus, there's two rovers still rolling on Mars. Look, there's the Curiosity rover climbing Mount Sharp. Hey, Curiosity, it's us, James and Dean. We may still be decades away from sending humans to Mars, but one can always dream. So get outside this week just after sunset and look quickly for Mercury low in the southwest. And take your time to see Venus and Mars higher up. And even with the rocky earth below your feet, you can always still reach for the planets as you keep, keep looking, looking up. up. Welcome back. Uh, winds north, 25 knots, mainly for northern Lynn Canal, uh, becoming more easterly and lighter as you head south, just 15 knots here, becoming uh, northeast or east-northeast at the same speed up to the North Seas. 9 to 11 feet here along the coast tomorrow, and then on Saturday those uh, come down even further, just uh, 6 to 7 feet in the south coast. So lose a small craft of iseries all along the coast here for Saturday. And uh, light winds for Christmas Eve here, southern inside waters, northeast or north-northeast at about 20 for Stevens Passage. No change for Northern Lane Canal. And Prince William Sound uh, tomorrow, north 15 into the north Gulf Coast. Light winds cook inlet, uh, north winds 25 early on here for the Barren Islands and coming down tomorrow afternoon, westerlies 15 to 20 across Kodiak. Saturday, big increase, full gales here, Kodiak Island, gales for the Barrens, Kamishak Bay, 30 knots, Southern Cook Inlet, 20 knots to the north, northeast 20, Prince William Sound, easterly to the north Gulf Coast, 25 to 30. Southeast 20, Bristol Bay, 40 to 45 knots southeasterlies here for the Alaska Peninsula on Friday, and southwest 25 towards Sitkanak, and then 40 knot winds everywhere on Saturday here with uh, from the east southeast uh, or south to east with 23 foot seas here on the Pacific side. Uh, Lucians tomorrow, South or east to southeast, 40 to 45 knots here for the eastern Aleutians. Small craft advisories back to the west. And then on Saturday, uh, northwest, 25 to 30 out here, uh, 20, 20, 25 to 35 central Aleutians. And then also 25 to 35 knot winds for the Fox Islands. And for the southwest coast, 
south to southeast 25 knots. Gales with the permalofts tomorrow afternoon. And then for Saturday, uh, tomorrow night, gales hit the permalofts and then easterlies of 40 knots for the uh, southwest coast. On Saturday, northern Bering Sea, east 35, St. Lawrence Island with freezing spray. And for the eastern Arctic coast, southwest 20 tomorrow, 25 knots here for the central coast, west 25, back to the west and then dropping off to 15 knots from Wales to Cape Thompson. And then for Saturday, east increasing to 25 knots here down to the south, lighter winds, Cape Thompson and Cape Beaufort, southwest 20 to 25, central and western coast, southwest 25 on the east side. And looking at tonight's uh, pattern again, chance of showers continues here, mostly along the coast of the Panhandle and uh, maybe some uh, scattered snow showers on the North Gulf Coast. That should be mostly east of Cordova and probably west of Yakutat and then uh, decreasing flurries there over the eastern interior, but uh, more snow and clouds back to the west. Nothing really heavy out here. Wind and snow on the western Arctic coast and some snow for St. Lawrence Island and the next system out there to the west uh, bringing the wind and rain and gales into the eastern Aleutians and Alaska Peninsula tomorrow, spreading up through the Pervilofs and then this area of snow through the interior from the upper Yukon Valley down to possibly Fairbanks all the way out to the west. Mostly sunny southern Alaska with less wind and a pretty good day for the southeast coast, even better for uh, Christmas Eve here uh, for the Panhandle. Quiet weather over the interior, big wind and, or well, gale force winds here for the Alaska, or for Kodiak Island with uh, rain becoming mixed as you move inland and showers back out to the west. Have a great evening and thanks for joining us. These forecasts are to be used for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go flying. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbor master before you go boating. Alaska weather is made possible by the following sponsors. The National Weather Service. Alyeska Pipeline Service Company, sustaining Alaska's pipeline and its operations today and into the future.